All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to True Footy. It's grand final day, the biggest day of the year, the best day of the year, if you ask me, and so many other football fans across the country. Of course, it's a historic grand final. First time Perth is going to be hosting the grand final. Let's go for the state. I think everyone's pretty pumped to be able to go to potentially to a grand final that they otherwise wouldn't here in Perth. Additionally, it's good for the game. I think uh, we've got the best stadium outside of the MCG for a grand final. And obviously with the situation in Melbourne, no crowd, that's not the desired outcome anyone wants. So it is awesome that we're going to have a fully packed out Optus Stadium for grand final day. The atmosphere will be absolutely amazing. I'm not going. If, uh, if you haven't caught that already, I'm going to be doing the live stream later today with uh, Busher and Callum. Copped a bit of criticism a little bit for uh, not going to the game. I uh, did have the opportunity through some very generous people uh, offered me an opportunity to try and get tickets and I declined it. And some people think I'm crazy for that and I, I understand. Um, there's a few reasons, a few factors that go into why I chose not to go to the game today. The first reason is selfish because uh, it, from a YouTube perspective, I can get a lot more out of doing a live stream to be honest. And well, actually I don't know if that's selfish because the only person I'd be robbing in that scenario is me, but Grand Final Day is the biggest year, day of the year for the channel. Um, the biggest day of views we've ever had was last year's Grand Final stream and I really want to make the most of this year. I've been working really hard um, and to pass up on a lot of potential exposure to this channel uh, is something I didn't want to pass up on. So that was probably the first reason. The second reason was I kind of didn't want to take the ticket of someone who would uh, enjoy going more than myself. I'm not a Melbourne or Bulldogs fan, as you guys should know by now. So while I would have been, you know, very grateful for the seat and absolutely lived it up and I would have been cheering the days on for sure, there was a part of me that just thought, this ticket would probably be better off going to someone else. In the end, I think that's a ticket that I uh, more or less gave up Drewzy took to, you know, take his mum. So I'm actually stoked with that. That's fantastic. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity for a lot of people to go to a grand final and not to sound like a bit of a wanker, but I've been to three grand finals um, and, you know, my team was involved in all three. So without sounding like a bit of a twat, this would have been the least special grand final to me of the four and probably why I wasn't valuing it so much internally. But again, super flattered to be even offered the opportunity to go for a ticket. I was very, very flattered. The third reason um, is probably that, I don't know, something I've kind of become passionate about is the idea that not everyone's got something to do for Grand Final Day, uh, particularly if you're in Melbourne at the moment um, in lockdown or if you're in New South Wales. Grand Final Day might be pretty shit if your team's not in it, or even if it is, frankly. And something that's kind of cool to me is the idea that people have someone to watch it with. It's true footy. For those who maybe don't have better plans, I want you guys sitting along with us, watching along, having a couple of tinnies, calling the game. And frankly, that just really excites me. I can't wait. Grand Final Day last year was, you know, probably top five, ten best days of my life. Really enjoyed it and uh, really hoping to replicate that later today. Let's talk about the game, though. It, uh, it's... A really interesting grand final and uh, I've said it all week I think or even the last two weeks I think this is probably the best two teams of the comp I know the dogs sort of faltered and finished fifth but if you're looking at the their best form throughout the year I think there's no doubting that their best has been up there with Melbourne's as you know probably the second best the other cool aspect of this grand final is that we're seeing two clubs that aren't necessarily big clubs I mean I guess in some metrics they are but in terms of success obviously Melbourne's gone through uh, to hell and back so to speak and this is their second grand final in 57 years or something silly they have been at the worst lows I've ever seen a football club at, and that's probably inclusive of Gold Coast. Melbourne were an absolute basket case some 10 years ago. On the dog side of things, uh, they've actually been a f relatively successful side since I've been following footy. They've had they've probably bottomed out twice, if I'm not mistaken, but they've also been around the mark for prelims and stuff like that, and of course won the Premiership in 2016, but obviously not a club that is brimming with Premiership success. They've only won two in their history, so this is actually really nice for them to have another crack at a third flag. I think I've copped a lot of criticism this year, uh, for in particular from Bulldogs fans about the idea that I might hate the Bulldogs. I actually really like them. They're one of my favorite teams that aren't West Coast. I don't really believe in having second teams because there's West Coast and then there's the rest. But in, if I had to pick a second team, Bulldogs would be pretty close to that. The criticism comes from because I tipped them to miss the finals this year and what was not even probably not even the worst howler of my predictions video. I can't wait to do my reaction video to that. But essentially I tried to pick a roughie to miss the eight and I 
just like to do this thing where I tip the teams that everyone thinks are going to do crap to do well, and that was Collingwood this year, and I tipped the team that everyone thought was going to get better because they got Trelaw to slide. I don't know. I just felt like messing it up a little bit, and obviously I got that call horribly wrong. I did tip the dogs to make the top four the previous year in 2020, uh, and they weren't quite up to it, and I'd, maybe I felt a little bit burned by that. I don't know, but I'm really, really happy to see them make the grand final regardless. I don't really care. My ego can take uh, getting that prediction wildly wrong, and <laughs> regardless of whether they win or not to Day, I still look like an absolute nuffy for that. Note to self, do not make a big call about a team in your AFL predictions videos. Who do I want to win today? It's, um, I, I'm going to say Melbourne, obviously. Uh, I've already alluded to that in this video, but I do genuinely like both teams. And like I said, it's probably the first grand final in a while that I've probably been happy with either outcome. You generally pick a horse to back in each grand final, or at least I do. Pretty much barracked against Richmond in all three of their grand finals. Probably a bit harsh, but if I'm being honest, I did. Obviously barracked for West Coast in 2018. And in 2016, I was definitely going for the Dogs as the underdog team. This is the first year in a while where I can look at it objectively and say, I'm happy with either team winning the premiership here. I think what draws me to Melbourne is probably firstly the belief that they've been the best team this year. I've called it in about round nine, which you know is not that hard to call when they were nine and oh on top of the ladder. But I, felt, I just had this feeling that they were going to lift the cup. I could just see it happening. And everything this year has sort of justified that view. You know, Max Gorn kicking the goal after the siren in round 23 against Geelong. It's all just set up this perfect Melbourne script, which doesn't mean it's going to happen. But I've just had that feeling. And I would like to see the best team all year get rewarded with the premiership. Doesn't always happen. In fact, it rarely happens where the minor premier actually wins the flag. That's actually a very rare occurrence. Secondly, it would be the French that I have that support Melbourne and have been long-suffering Melbourne fans. One that comes to mind is Caden McDonald, who I'm sure you're all very familiar with. He's up there with the most passionate Melbourne fans I've ever met, and more than that, he's, he's such a humble guy. He's so nervous that his team's going to let him down. He doesn't really chat shit ever. He's just a pure footy fan, and I would really, really be happy for him to see his team win the flag. Uh, obviously, he hasn't yet in his lifetime, and I know just how much it would mean to him, and I'll, I'll be thinking of him during the grand final for sure. Another man is Tim Diskin, who we've become friends with fairly recently. For those who don't know, Tim recently competed at the Paralympic Games in Tokyo in swimming. And you may or may not have seen it, but he tragically lost his mother the same week he won a silver medal at those games. So my heart goes out to him. He's one of the most genuine and kind people I've come across. I haven't even met him in person, but he's really supportive of the AFL YouTube scene already. He's in just about every live stream that I've been a part of. He gave me this. I mean, look at this t-shirt. Give him hell, Melbourne team, sh team shirt. He sent that over. I can also reveal that it was Tim that offered me the opportunity to get a ticket to the grand final through his membership. So for a guy who's gone through the adversity that he has in the last couple of weeks, the emotional turmoil, he's still such a positive, generous guy. And as much as anyone, that's why I hope the D's win the flag for him today. And got to give a shout out to my boy Backyard Charizard as well, who's flown over from Adelaide to be in attendance for today's grand final. You may remember he used to do streams a couple of years ago. Um, hasn't really touched it too much lately, but still a ripper guy. And uh, he's another one of those blokes that just simply deserves it. On the Bulldog side of things, like I said, I just really admire their team, in particular Bontempelli. I love Bontempelli, and I really would love to see him lift the Premiership Cup again. I guess the only thing that mitigates that feeling a little bit is that they won one five years ago. But just such a likable champion of the game, and I, that's one thing I really respect or find myself respecting is people who are the best or close to the best and are humble. He's definitely one of my favorite players outside the Eagles. In terms of who's going to win, uh, this is a really tough question. Uh, I've been tipping Melbourne publicly over this week, and I just can't shake this this little feeling now that the Bulldogs are going to win. And don't base your tips on me. I am pretty rubbish at this. I, I will still stick with Melbourne, but it is so hard to tip against this Bulldog side. When they click into this particular gear, they are incredibly hard to stop. They did it in 2016, and you just get that feeling they're doing it again in 2021. They were written off going into the finals. They absolutely demolished Essendon in week one of the finals like it was nothing. They beat Brisbane, a very tough ask, over in Queensland, and then barely broke a sweat as they smashed Port Adelaide by 71 points in the prelim. This is a team that can beat you anywhere, anytime. And on top of that, they have so many match winners in that side, as do Melbourne, of course, but those clutch style players like Bailey Smith and Bontempelli in particular, it's literally just going to be a game of who takes their opportunities better. I made this point on the Drew Footy Show. Um, we were asked, where will the game be won and lost? And I think I went third or fourth. So I had to add something different, but I more or less suggested that the opportunities taken by the medium to small forwards 
will be what ultimately decides the game. You can look at clearances and contested possessions and hit outs and stuff like that. And I think they're all probably going to sway in Melbourne's favour. From memory, Melbourne generally dominated those stats uh, both times that they met this year. And obviously they split those games one each. So I think Melbourne's vulnerability when they have dropped off the boil this year has been their ability to score. Obviously, they well and truly have found their mojo and Ben Brown's come back to the side and looks like he's just on the verge of finding some form. And the Bulldogs at the other end of the field uh, have no Josh Bruce, obviously, who was their leading goal kicker this year. So with just one real genuine tall key forward talent, I feel like it may be tough for the talls to get off the chain in this particular game. And as such, you know, your Waitmans, your Bailey Fritches, your Pickets, those guys will be given half opportunities. Petrarca as well. Hannon, Bailey Smith. If these guys get glimpses of the goals... It'll be the team that puts those goals away more consistently that will win the game. Sounds really simplistic, but you know, you take out Dusty Martin kicking three amazing goals in last year's grand final and Geelong potentially win that game. Yes, they won by five goals, but they sort of piled it on a little bit at the end. And as much for momentum as anything, taking those half opportunities is what will ultimately win them the game. And one final point, I guess, on this particular grand final is I think it's really good indicator that equalization is working. I think in 2016, if I'm not mistaken, I might be misquoting, but I feel like Gil McLaughlin said it was one of the best results in terms of his career that the Bulldogs had won the flag. You know, we sort of went through this period where your Hawthorns, Geelongs, Collingwoods, the well-resourced big sides would win a lion's share of the flag. So the dogs sort of coming from nowhere and winning one that was a huge sign that equalization was working. Richmond's another good example of that. They were a bit of a basket case for some 30 years and they were able to build into a dynasty through the draft and all the modern ways that clubs can rebuild now. Melbourne's another example of that and so too the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs never really went through a basket case um, phase at all. They've generally been all right over the last couple of decades, but they're not a massively resourced club. And obviously 2016 was their first premiership in something like 60 years. So now that we're getting two clubs who haven't won many flags playing against each other in a grand final, that's a huge win to be honest. And I think it's sort of a signal to all those clubs out there that support a team that hasn't been particularly successful, Fremantle, Carlton, even Gold Coast, your time can come. And uh, it's going to be seriously exciting to see either side lift the premiership trophy later today. Anyway, guys, I'll sort of back in my tip of Melbourne by a few goals today. But like I said, really can see any outcome possible here. I'm super excited and I hope it's going to be a close one. And to be honest, I think both of these teams are too good to let it be a smashing. But then again, you could say that about any grand final that ended in a smashing. Hope to see you guys on the live stream later today. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you soon. Thanks, guys.